MK and I am joining today at Crystal with Pineapple Papers for Off the Board. This is my inspiration that I pulled from Pinterest and I'm also going to be pairing it up with Christy's Beautiful Life and the last 30 day sketch. So, or day 30 sketch, I should say. Um, what I have chosen to use today is Bloom with Grace Wood Shapes from Close to My Heart. Now this is from Oh, probably a year or two ago. I'm not sure if these are available anymore, but here are the little wooden shapes that all came in that little package, which it's quite a bit, and I will not be using all of them, just a few. I also have two photos picked out for this particular layout, and I'll be talking about those in just a minute. And then I have my little tin, or I should, it's not even a tin, it's plastic, you guys, um, of my uh, wood veneer gears. Now, most of these are from Kaiser Craft and some of them are uh, from my own um, store. And then I also have this other little bin of gold accents. I don't know what they're called or even what they are, but they're all from Stampin' Up. Now, Stampin' Up does what's called laser detailed embellishments. And well, they're not even embellishments, you guys. Um, I'm not really sure, but you get a bunch of them in a flat package, almost like a piece of paper, and then you just punch them all out and you have all these delicate little little things to use in your layouts. Anyways, I have collected quite a few and just forget to use them. I also have two other papers from Stampin' Up. The brown striped one, I'm not really sure uh, where it came from. I know that I got it from my girlfriend's stash. And then um, the green one is from, I believe it was called Poppy Parade. I don't really remember, but I do remember how excited I was to receive that paper and that I never used it. Mm -hmm. Yep, so today is gonna be the first day I use it and I love this very dark green with um, this bright green in the center. So what I'm going to be doing is I went ahead and I cut two of the squares into two by twos, which is kind of sort of what I guesstimated um, in the sketch that that's what size they were. And then I cut down, um, I wanna say one and a half by one and a half. So that way I had like a little border to represent um, the pin that I picked up from Pinterest. Now, because off the board is what it is, um, <laughs> how that works is uh, many years ago, a lot of people were using Pinterest to inspire their creativity or get ideas from. Now, I stopped using Pinterest a long, long time ago. So playing along with off the board is kind of challenging because I don't really have a whole lot of things pinned to my boards um, that aren't several years old and no longer inspire me, to be honest. Um, just telling it for the real spied. Anyways, uh, so I came across what I had um, dubbed like something to do with card making. Um, and I don't make cards uh, a lot. I used to back in the day, I used to dabble in all paper crafts. Um, and then I kind of went exclusive to, to scrapbooking. And so I have a lot of these pins um, that are card making. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make this card making pin work in my scrapbooking. I mean, clearly I liked it for some reason, whether it be the colors, the dimension, um, the simplicity of it, I'm not really sure, but I'm gonna, you know what? I'll start using my card ideas and, and relate them into scrapbooking. That sounds like it makes sense to me. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to follow along with the sketch as well as be inspired by the pin. And so with the pin, it's, it's two little squares, both of them are um, notched out in the corners like tickets. So I did that. And then one of them was raised on dimensions. Oh, I did that as well. Now I'm going through all of my little delicate, um, leafy, flowery, well, not even flowery, stemmy bits, I guess. I don't know, you guys. Most of them are leaves. Some of them are sprigs, things like that. Uh, I'm going to go through and just basically fill in all the squares. Now, I wasn't really sure where I was going with this at the moment, but I'm trying to keep everything to where they, what I add to the square doesn't take away from the square. Now, here, when I was first um, laying out my grid, which I have to be honest, you guys, grids are not my favorite, um, only because of the fact that my OCD kicks in and they have to be perfect. Oh my gosh, it's it's awful um, and, and devastating at the same time. Um, <laughs> but when I was 
first laying them all out, I thought, oh my gosh, I made my squares too small. I should have made them bigger but I was halfway through it. I'd already, you know, uh, distressed all the edges to kind of make them a little bit more rougher for the photos. I've already popped them all up. I already made them basically. Um, when what I should have done was taken them to the paper to see what they looked like first before going through all of that. But I didn't. And I actually end up making it work and kind of liking it the way that it is. But I didn't realize how small they were until after I started adding the elements on and they kept getting smaller. So the more that I added, the more smaller my squares got. But I did not want my squares to disappear. I don't want that gorgeous green um, you know, to be hidden underneath a whole bunch of embellishments. So even though I did embellish almost every square, I don't even know how I completely missed that upper right hand corner square or not really in the corner but the one next to the corner I don't know how I missed that one but I did <laughs> and it, I was good I was grateful that I did because then I ended up um, leaving another square empty as well and I thought you know what I it's still pin inspired even though every square isn't decorated so I really do enjoy how this turns out um, because I ended up decorating all the squares as opposed to just two sides of the photos that like the sketch is um, implying. So anyways, I, I just really like how it turned out. Just long story short. All right, these are photos from Bodhi yet again. Now this is just the post office slash bar um, of Bodhi. They, <laughs> oddly enough, even though it doesn't look like it, oddly enough, they had two separate doors. Um, so one side was a gentleman's club is kind of what it was called. Huh? And then the other side was the post office. And that wall that seems like it's not a wall, it's just a bunch of posts in the center of the room, actually fell down several years ago. And so it looks like, you know, while you're waiting for, you know, the mail, why don't you step up and have a drink? <laughs> but that isn't how... It used to be. It used to be to where they were actually two separate buildings. If you look at the building from the outside, you could clearly see that there's two separate doors for each entryway. Um, my my most takeaway from this photo was how simplistic the mailbox was. Um, the little the little uh, cabinet here that is closest to the door that was their mail slots. That is how they received their mail. The postmaster would. Um, receive the mail off of the off of the wagon the carriage cart and sort through it and then put it in the respected cubby no locks no keys no nothing everything went inside those little cubbies and the people would go in and just pick out their slot of mail and um to me it was just like oh my gosh how how far we've come um you know to this is the most dangerous town ever and yet their houses were never locked. Their doors were never locked. The businesses maybe shut down, but never closed. And the mail was never under lock and key. Like that nothing was behind a cabinet. There was no cabinet to be behind. Um, and yet, <laughs> you know, it was every day somebody was dying in this town, whether by the hand of the mine or the hand of a drunk person, you know, um, saying something disrespectful but to be honest it was very trusting this town was was wide open and and completely trusting and I I just I, it it just blows my mind at how we have come to where you know now in larger cities um you know we we close down our shops with with gates you know metal clingy gates um I'm, I'm not really sure the exact word I'm looking for but um some people have bars on their windows, which I, I'm not really sure. I remember my grandmother having bars on her windows in a larger city. I always thought that that's because she called them storm windows. And that's why they had bars on them is so the like the leaves and the and the limbs of trees and things like that couldn't get through the bars as easy um, if a tornado was to come through, which I have seen that you guys I've seen tornadoes smash through the first section of glass in my grandmother's house but not the second section. And so I thought that that's what the bars were for too, you know, being, um, you know, a, a kid from a very small town where we never walked, we never locked our front door. We never locked our cars. We never 
you know, did any of that kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, the older I got and the more aware <laughs> I re I got in life, um, you know, it, it came to me. But as a kid, I, I, you know, it's a storm window. So I thought that the reason for the bars. Anyways, where I was going with that was the fact that, um, you know, it's Bodhi was never known to be the town of trust thy neighbor, but yet they did not lock anything up. Like it wasn't, it wasn't anything. They emptied the tills every night. Um, they put their money in the bank every, you know, every day or every one, you know, every week. And yet they did not, you know, see it as, you know, I'm going to lock up my mail or I'm going to lock up my store or anything like that. Um, you know, that, like I said, the, the money and um, the mine was pretty much the majority of this, this small little town. And so that's pretty much the only thing that anybody was possibly concerned with, right? And of course, you know, everything was in the bank. So anyways, um, to finish everything up, I went ahead and I glued everything um, down on my little squares and just trying to build up my little clusters. Again, trying to keep them small enough to where they didn't overpower my little green squares because I wanted those to be like the highlight of um, my layout. Also, uh, I did decide that I was going to use the gears instead of flowers, but I thought it would be kind of cool to bring in these uh, these tiny little bud of a flower. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. They are flowers, but they're so tiny and so small. I thought, oh my gosh, those would be perfect intermixed with these gears. Um, on top of that, I went ahead and I colored them this deep dark blue. At first I was gonna color them a little lighter blue, see if I can't get a pale blue out of them, but that didn't work. It actually looked like more like a seasick blue. And the reason I did that is because my pictures seem to have a blue hue to them. And I thought, well, I will add the blue. And then what I'll do is I will add a um, cardstock of the same deep dark blue as the marker is. And I really like how it pops off the page. Um, all of this natural looking stuff and then you have blue which actually brings out the photos even more off of um, this grid grid style page so anyways thank you so much for joining me today this is the layout that I have come up with for the very last sketch of Christie's beautiful life and 30 days of sketches I'm also playing along with off the board and I have taken a card inspiration and adapted it into a scrapbooking inspiration. All right, that's all I have today. Um, be sure to check out everyone else that is playing along with Off the Board. Their links are down below. Then I also have another separate set of links that are folks that are still playing along with Christy's um, Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches. And I also have um, the creators of every sketch for every day down below as well in case you guys are curious as to who made the sketch. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot to tell you guys that my inspiration came from what is called the Greetery. It is a really, really cool website. Oh my gosh, do they have some amazing things. I am not here to enable anybody, but if y'all wanna check out the Greetery and check out some very different, very unique dyes and stamps, by all means, the link is also down below because I was blown away and I will not admit or deny spending any money at the greetery. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll check y'all later. Bye.